has been drying and uh, it looks like it's progressing pretty well. We have it flat on the back and we have the root system. What we see here is kind of gnarly looking. And that itself is, is interesting, but I think what we might do is come in here and trim some of this back. Uh, it isn't fully dried, so we are still close to five pounds, a little less. And of course we have some more stuff to add to it. We have the vines to add to it. We have the plate. Now, the purpose of this, this little project is to occupy a little bit of time. Yes, we have a little more time and money right now. But uh, how we plan on doing this, using common items or, or found items. If I was an artist, this would be a, a found art type project. But when you use something like this electrical 4x4 plate, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I have trimmed the piece. And we're going to try to hog this out a little bit. It'll be rough and it'll be crude. But see how we flatten the back? I've kind of located about where I think the uh, plate needs to go. Made the plate hole. And see, we've slotted so that we'll be able to take the uh, scenery on and off. And this gives us this little area back here that I can drill into and chisel out and that sort of thing, try to take a little weight out of it. Same thing would go in up in this area up here. Just run the saw blade at various depths in there, just to kind of loosen it up, and then we'll just start take a little mallet or a hammer and start cleaning it out a little bit. Okay, other than a mess, we have a glue gun heating up and we have some pieces of styrofoam. And what we're going to do is we're going to layer these things together and then kind of create sort of a um, geological representation of the Carter's layer of limestone. And uh, we're going to chip and crunch and uh, flake and see if we can then uh, create an artificial stone. Okay, here is our rock, and we're going to mix up. I've scored it up and undercut and chipped it up, and a lot of that scratching is going to get covered up, but it should give it maybe a little bit of something more to uh, hold on to. And we're going to cover it up with a, well, basically a mortar. I've got some uh, Portland cement type this Portland cement left over from building the barbecue and some masonry sand. And we're going to make us up a mix and kind of paint it on this thing. And we'll probably do a couple of different little layers. Well, that is the first coat. I'm going to give it another to thicken up the uh, mortar. It's actually pretty sturdy. I'm going to give it another another round to uh, thicken up the coating so that it's uh, a little heavier, a little thicker, a little stronger. Now let's mix some mortar to go over our little fake rocks. Now what I got here is just masonry sands, leftovers. Now all this stuff is left over. The point of this exercise isn't to um, save money necessarily it's to avoid spending money since i've got all this stuff around the house uh, this is what we're using we have leftover sand from the uh, barbecue pit project and we have leftover type s cement from the barbecue pit project so we have two parts sand to one part type s uh, cement and we go in here we break up the clots and if you'll dry mix this stuff well to start with, it'll serve you well by the time you put the water in there. Because the issue that you get run into with mixing mortar is, add water, it goes from too stiff to soup in a hurry, especially when you have small quantities like this little bit right here. And all we need is enough to, to coat our, our surfaces. We're going to add some water. 
If you add too much water and get it too soupy, it can end up with a real weak mortar. We're getting ready to do the moss. And I went to the woods this morning when I hunted, pulled off some moss. And you see we've got some immature leaves here, got a little yellow look to it. And the mature leaves are this nice kind of dark color right there. So what I'm gonna to try to go for, I think is I'm gonna to try to go for a little pad that goes something like that. We'll try to duplicate like a little piece of moss right across there. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to mix some rather stiff mortar and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make me a pad. I'm going to drape it off here. I don't want to lose this little detail and that little detail. And I'm actually going to build it up thick and, and hard, and smooth it over and I'm going to come back and stipple it. And then what I'll do is I will paint it with two colors. Now these are my attempts to match. I have, and, and this is just like two dollars for sample uh, pieces, and, but they'll mix to any color you want. So, you know, it is like two dollars. This will be for the mature leaves and then I'll do this with the light green. Yo sé lo que estás pensando. Este hombre es el más obrero que he hecho parte de pago, no? Now, I'm going to create the, the stipple. I'm going to take just something like this, and I'm just going to push it in. I'm going to give it about five minutes to start setting before I do that. Okay, now remember when we paint, the paint is going to fill in the grooves, so we've got to make these fairly deep. Now, does that look like it has a little bit of a texture in it? We're going to have to be really careful when we paint because the paint is going to fill those holes so easily. Well, there is our fake rock complete. And... Um, we gave it some score lines, and it's supposed to be our moss up on top. Kind of scratched in a little bit in the back, kind of give it more of a rock look. And the color turned out pretty good. Right, now here is the moss from yesterday, or the day before, and it's beginning to turn yellow. We see a lot of that um, new growth starting to bud out, and we've lost some of our deep green because we, we don't have it on limestone anymore. It's beginning to die out on us a little bit. Uh, so our colors don't match as good as they did when we got the little paint sample made up. But that is very close, at least it was the day of, to the color. And we've kind of smattered on a little bit of yellow dots to represent that. And anyway, um, it doesn't need watering to keep the, keep the rock alive keep the moss alive on the rock I should say and um, anyway styrofoam mortar uh, and there's our fake rock
Now our homemade deer scene is essentially finished. We may add a little something to it in the future. But uh, there's a rock with a little moss pad on it. And uh, we've got a little piece of vinery coming up through the bottom. And that's just a natural shape, so it, I didn't take a green one and tuck it under. That's just the way it is. And it is glued in a little, uh, a little picture frame hanging nail there. It goes up and we come around and in the back on each side we we uh, kind of routed out a little hole and it fits in there from that thing and the hot belt glued it down. If you'll notice there's a little uh, strip of rubber back there to keep from mar in the wall uh, across the plate and there's another one here on this plate. Does the same thing. Now this plate is the one that will go into the, the plywood piece in the back of the shoulder mount. So that the shoulder mount actually mounts up right up against here. And if there's a little bit of gap in there, that's why we painted it black so that it shouldn't show. So that the, the deer shows that he's right next to this tree. And uh, of course the vine's crawling up and down it like that. We'll lose that leaf, I'm sure, with, with as, as the vine dries out and gets stiff. But uh, they're just fence row vines and a fence row cedar that we dug up and planed the back side off and hollowed it out as much as we could. And that's of course our fake rock that you saw us make. I have rehydrated the moss a little bit and look how much darker it presents now. Earlier in the video we, we saw it looking quite much, much more yellow. But now that we've got a little bit of a sunlight on it, a little bit of water. You can really see the difference between the yellow immature leaves in there and the, uh, the deep green that the moss naturally has. So at one point in time, the shade of that moss we have on our fake rock was the color it presented after I had bagged it up and, um, you know, returned from the woods into town.